My name is Andy Brown. I'm the percussion section leader of the Marmion Military Academy Drumline. I'm currently a senior, class of 1991. I'm also a member of the Madison Scouts Drum and Bugle Corps. Today I will show some demonstrations of the breakdown procedure of the instrument called the marching snare drum. I'll start off with some technique. The drum is played with a traditional grip, that is with the left hand messed up like this, the right hand in the normal style. The right hand grip is caused by right here, and then it's placed right here between the first finger, and the fingers are wrapped around the stick. This is so you can get maximum rebound potential and still use the fingers to control the rebound. On the left hand, it's formed by placing the left stick like this, and then curling your fingers underneath the stick resting just below the fingernail on your third finger, and then wrapping this finger over the stick and leaving this here. The stick should approach the drum at a 90 degree angle, 45 degrees away from each stick. The right elbow is supposed to stick out, and then the left elbow is supposed to be in straight. The demonstration of this, simply just playing, notice how the sticks move up in a straight arc on both, both sticks. I'll just play some simple eighth notes on each hand. The sticks move straight up in a continuous motion, not up, down, up, down, up and down, in continuous motion. When the other stick is not playing, it remains about a half inch off the drum head. I'll demonstrate that again. That is a proper technique for the traditional grip. Next, I'll demonstrate some rudiments, starting with the uh, single stroke roll, played open, closed, open. Notice how the second beat of the double is always of equal volume with the 
first. It's not when you, when that happens, you know that you're not you're not controlling the sticks enough. The idea is to get equal volume. Uh, both hits. Um, proper technique for practicing that is to try to accent the second one. What that does is that strengthens the muscles within your arms to um, be able to play the second beat of equal volume as the first. Okay, the next rudiment is called the triple stroke roll. This is like the double, except this one has, has three hits per arm motion. Okay, this will be played open, closed, open.
double paradiddle, which is right, left, right, right, oh, I'm sorry, right, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, right, left, left.
similar to the triple stroke roll, except there's a grace note that precedes the first attack. Um, next is the flam cue. This starts with called a low height flam, and then an immediate left hand accent. Diddle is one of the more difficult rudiments. 
it's, it's easy to be confused with a regular flam tap, except on this one you play right flam, a left tap, and then immediately another left flam. Right tap, right flam, left tap, left flam. This is more difficult because you're going from a tap to an accent. I'll demonstrate this open, closed, open. except for a slight emphasis of the um, on the beat type feel, not on the off beat, but rather on the beat so the um, other companies can and stuff. several of the more advanced rudiments such as inverted flam taps. Okay, that also has um, flam drags and on the end it has some straight right flams. Up. Those are straight right flams. 
Okay, next I will attempt to demonstrate the stick juggle and the proper techniques for um, developing this. Um, this is shown on my uh, notation of ingrown toenails. Um, I'll demonstrate it once up to tempo and then show you the breakdown procedure. break down this is just to think of it as a rudiment. The first stroke is the right stick. But as the right's going on, the left is being flipped over. The left goes from its traditional grip, you kind of hold it with, between these knuckles, and then allow it to swing around like this. And then you hold it in place by these two fingers. This is um, similar to the Lee Stevens grip for four mallets on marimba. The stick, as the right stick hits, flips around like that. Okay, the next one, um, the, left, the left stick hits, but as the left stick hits, the right is thrown in the air, and then, this is kind of complicated because you're, you're switching. The, bet, the easiest way to develop it um, before you start with the toss is to try to stick the, put the stick underneath your shoulder. You got that far, as soon as the left hits, put the stick underneath your shoulder. And then grab the right stick from the front end, strike that on the drum as you grab the left stick into uh, traditional grip. And then you strike the left stick and flip the right at the same time. I'll show that again in really slow motion. Once, once that's taken up to tempo, I, I'd say about... Once that's up to tempo, then I would try doing the toss. This pro will probably take some time to work out. You gotta, instead of putting the stick underneath your shoulder, you're going to toss, toss the right stick up in the air. Toss the right stick up in the air, so you're catching your left hand in the traditional grip. Just like that. Okay, I'll show this in, I'll try and do slow motion, it's tough with the uh, tossing stick. And then once, once you're able to do it at a slow tempo, then you can work out the speed just as a rudiment to oh, about a march tempo. I'd say about between 120 and 132 uh, beats per minute, um, kind of each hit as a quarter note. Um, that's about what the march tempo for ingrown toenails is. It's um, that can allow, it, it took me a few days to learn but it can allow, I'd, I'd allow plenty of time to learn it. Because again, it's just one of the more difficult visual, uh, rudimental type things to do. Uh, from that, you can, you can do different tangents. Um, you can flip the other stick around. show the, um, the arrangement for snare drum for the athletic support. Uh, okay, so this is used at the beginning of football games as the introduction of the athletes. Um, the important thing to remember here is not to not to get over um, over hyped on the accents and then still keep the um, the taps the uh, the lower notes down. Um, the tendency is to go and all that does is you're you're raising your arms and your hands, um, which gives you more volume but considerably less control on the roll. 
which the whole name of the game is control and not volume. There's not much else to say. Okay, now I'll demonstrate the basic uh, two techniques for playing marimba, xylophone, or vibes. The first is more of a jazz-oriented grip called the Gary Burton grip named after the jazz performer Gary Burton, specialized in vibes. Um, this is basically um, taking one mallet, putting it in between the, uh, the index finger and then the other mallet with the thumb, and it allows the mallets to cross underneath. Um, this is exceptionally well because you can get great amounts of volume and control without having very, that much coordination in the outer limbs of your fingers. C chords, uh, C. Um, and you could play, you could play in pretty much um, various amount of reaches too. Um, when is the uh, C diminished set or C diminished? Where, where the hands can actually get really close together and still having reasonable control over the mounts. Um, this, as I said, is made mostly so you can get volume out of the hands or out of the um, appendages. And it works out really well for jazz because that's a lot of um, need for vibe players to get more volume. Next is the um, Lee Stevens grip, which is a little bit more complicated. Um, the number one mallet goes in between these fingers here, held like that. And then the number two mallet is placed right about inside the thumb and then rested on the first joint of the forefinger and then with the thumb wrapped over it. This has its advantages over the, uh, the Burton grip because you not only can move this mallet, but you can move this one too using these fingers. However, there's not as much volume that can, can be used. Um, let's see. It works out really well for playing like arpeggiated stuff. But again, it can be used for playing black chords. And I think, I think this is an easier grip because, well, I've, I've learned more dexterity from it. I'm playing passages like um, using the 1-3-2-4 uh, going... Uh, I just, I just feel I can gain more control over that. It also has its advantages on um, something called ripple rolls, where you're playing, let's see, a one, two, four, three. But put together, it sounds like. Where on a snare drum, if it was played like that, it should sound just like a double stroke roll. be that even, where with the Burton grip, whenever you play rolls, you pretty much have to play um, the what they call the double lateral roll, where this, this can be played with the Stevens grip, but you also have the option of the uh, ripple roll.